Also, the other big, huge satisfactory that I had in my in my heart is that um, it was my dad's dream for me to work at the family auto repair. But I told him one day that I had to I had to fly on my own. And you know, when I would bring him to the shop, you know, he told me he was always he was always proud of me. And you know, and, and I was always happy to know that. Today I'm joined by Caesar Tapali. Caesar has spent the past many, many years since he was 15 as a car mechanic and the past four years going on five years owning an actual auto shop, auto mechanic. Is that what it's called? Auto shop? Auto repair. Auto repair shop. So I think Caesar is the perfect person to shed light on what it's like or what it takes to become a mechanic and to be an owner of a auto repair shop. With that said, Caesar, thanks for coming on. I appreciate hey, it. Thank you for awesome. having me here, Joe. Awesome. Cool. So let's. Uh, you, you you said since you were fifteen, you were you were a, a mechanic. Um, I'm assuming you knew people in your life who were mechanics too, because at fifteen. So talk about how you fell into it and what where you come from a little bit. Well, when I moved out here, uh, I moved here from Mexico when I was uh, eight years old. In okay. Ninety six. Uh, you know, my father was already a mobile mechanic. He used to have a small auto repair business. Uh, you know, like a lot of people have nowadays a mobile mechanic so you know he he used to go and repair people's house uh, people's cars at their houses you know they would find them on the paper or word of mouth a lot of it was through the church you know they they used to refer him to at the church and he would take me with him um, at first i wouldn't like it because i would just want to be playing with my friends or right or i would hope that when we would go repair a car people would invite me inside their house and say hey come watch tv or <laughs> that's one way okay tv time yeah so but uh but you know i was there those those times you know when he used to um when he was growing the business and that's how i was brought up on it you know and then as i was growing up you know i started high school middle school and my cousins they were all into street racing and you know fixing up their cars well not so much street racing but you know during those days you know they all wanted to have a cool car and that's what I really, really, that's when I really started liking it. I, I really wanted to have my own car and be able to work on it. But I've always known that it's very expensive to get stuff done on your car. Hmm. And what better way than, you know, to learn on how to do your your own stuff, your own repairs. Your own... And you were how old when you realized that, when you thought that way? I was about 17. That's wow. when I was in high school already. And, you know, like... If you didn't have a car, I guess you were not that cool. Right, right, right. <laughs> so so it, it was cool cars that got you into it, and it was the notion that working on your car, fixing it up was expensive. Yes. That got you thinking, maybe I should learn how to work on my own stuff. Of course. Stuff. Of course. Wow. Okay, so you're 17, and you, you realize that you should learn how to... So what, what do you do next? So what I do next... Um, then um, I wasn't really hanging out with my dad too much, um, you know, because I was a... I was drawn to my cousins, you know, them being cooler and, you know, wanting to hang out with them. Uh -huh. So we're always doing, you know, repairs at the shop. By then, my dad had opened up his uh, own business, auto repair business. And where were you in the U.S. geographically? In, in uh, Washington? We, yeah, we were here in, okay. we were here in Washington okay. the whole time. So then he opened up an auto repair business out there in Seattle with my brother. Okay. Uh, his name is Andrew Tapali. Okay. And they opened up 509 Auto Repair. Oh. So, so that was our, the, the first family business. You know, my cousins used to work there, my dad. It was always family owned. And, you know, I used to see them struggle sometimes with repairs. And, you know, it wasn't easy at first because you just, you just, you just don't know how to run a business at first. But, you know, they, they were able to get to it. You know, today they're still open. You know, they're, they're still doing business. Wow. So you were 17 and you were watching your father and bro brother both start a, an auto yes. repair shop business. So, looking back, do you view that experience as, uh, 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 do you value that experience in the sense of having a front row seat to two people trying to get something going and taking mental notes as to maybe what you could do different or what you could do the same? Or w did, did, did you view that in that way at all? Of course. Yes, of course. Because I, I saw their struggle. I, I saw a lot of the problems, um, you know, and then 
that's why I, I did everything differently. So you, you, know, you took mental notes. I took mental notes, uh, and you know, I never had a notebook or anything, but I always remembered, and that's what I did differently. You know, you run business differently and talk to people differently, of course. Got it. Um, most, mostly, mostly, um, you know, I believe it's presentation. You know, on how how to run a business. You know, have a real nice, clean shop. I like that. Have a, you know, have a professional handshake with customers when you meet them. Try to try to get to, to know them a little bit. You know, it's just, they're not just there to repair their car. They're also there. You know, maybe become a friend. Right, right. I like that. I like that. So, so I'm assuming you, at, in your position when you're watching your father and brother um, starting a, a, a business, I'm assuming that the the idea was that you were to join them at some point and work together. When did you reach the point in your head when you said maybe I'll I'll you know d get my own thing going? Well, yeah, there was there I, there was a I was working with them for maybe about three years. Um, you know, I, it was like I was on and off, on and off. You, you know, I I just always felt like it was a little tough to work with family. You know, because I hear you. It's it, it's a little uncomfortable to work with them, and and you just don't get to expand your wings as much as you would on your own. Got it. So, what? does it take to become a mechanic? Do you need to know how to fix cars or is there a test or school or a certificate that you need to get? Of course, there's a lot of schooling, you know, you can go to uh, colleges, uh, but I think that the, the, the first step is to hanging out with somebody that works on cars. Okay. Find friends that knows how to work on cars. So talk why that's important. Well, because uh, what that is, you get your hands dirty a little bit, you start learning the parts, or even get like a, for me, I also worked in a, at an auto parts place for a while. So that's where I learned how to develop my customer service skills, being able to talk with customers, being able to deal with their problems that they're having and learning the names of the parts, even deeper names like bolts with special names and different functions. So that helped me out a lot. You know, maybe start off at a part-time job at a local auto parts, even auto parts, they help you get certified that way you don't have to go to like a bunch of college level um, education but of course college classes are super important i think those will help you more than you know just getting certified so if, if it sounds like there's there's the the uh, just hearing you talk it sounds like there's really two big parts that go to um doing what you're doing today uh, being a, a mechanic uh there's the customer service part yes dealing with people shaking their hand Maybe, um, you know, viewing them as someone who's more than just someone who's fixing their car. Right. And then the other part is actually knowing how to fix a car. Of course. Percentage-wise, how much of each do you think is, is it, does it come down to and, and, and how important is, is each of those? And what would ultimately get you and keep customers in your shop? Um, is, is it the people part or is it the fixing the car part? I think both. Both are 100%. Both are 100% because... Um, you know, I, I always like to hear what people's opinions are when they leave the shop and they always leave very satisfied. It's been very few people that have not been so happy, you know, but I try to explain it to them before they leave of, you know, why sometimes our repair is so expensive or why sometimes a repair wasn't being able to be performed. But most of all, yeah, it's, it's gotta be really good customer service and a very good repair. And you know, double checking your work. You know, for example, if you have a job with a broken water hose, you know, before you start the the job, you make a pressure pressure test to make sure to to find where it's leaking from. Mm -hmm. Once you find the leak, you repair it, and then just to have some more peace of mind, you do another pressure test with that same hose to make sure that it's not leaking. You know, so stuff small stuff like that, then you have peace of mind that the repair was done properly. Interesting, interesting. So if if I want to become a mechanic what would be for anyone watching there to, who's desiring to become a mechanic you did mention the first thing would be to go and spend time in a shop or around right. people who fix cars get your hands dirty right what would actually what would be the what do i have to do in order for to be um for people to tell people i'm a mechanic is there a test i need to take or oh yes of course you have to become asc certified okay and then um you know there's with mechanics, also, you never stop learning. Every year, the industry is changing. Every year, we, are, we have new technology in cars. We have new sensors, new modules, new computers. Cars need to be recalibrated every year. They need to be reprogrammed. 
Uh, you know, back in the day, you know, you do your tune up and you don't have to reprogram nothing, just your stereo. <laughs> wow. And now you have to recalibrate all those, all these things, your throttle pedal, your throttle body, uh, even window regulators. You know, a lot of the European cars, you know, they're even more advanced. Everything has to be just right because they're, they have a lot of uh, electric um, functions. So, you know, if it's out of calibration, even your steering is electric now. Wow. So all of these components, you know, and you also have the, to have the technology to be able to calibrate, calibrate it yourself or <laughs> have the dealership do it for you. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since you brought up the uh, annual learning, because cars are constantly changing, right. talk about, you know, the change of cars from a mechanic's perspective. Do, how fast is it changing? Is it changing too fast? Is it what what how, how do things look in terms of like onboard computers or things like that? Is that something a mechanic should keep in mind or someone who wants to be a mechanic? Will there be a lot of training involved every single year? Or are the basic ideas remaining the same? Well, I mean, it, it depends how far you want to take your career. You know, for example, if you just want to perform oil changes or just be, you know, just perform maintenance, then, you know, you don't have to do a lot. You just have to do a little bit of studying. But if you have to, like, if you want to run your own business and, you know, work at a bigger shop, you always have to take more classes, like, at least, at least every year, you know, or go to seminars or... Or do webinars but most of all you, you you have to keep yourself actualized every year if possible or at least every two years same thing like with our, our, our repair devices or scanners you know you have to actualize them every year and what does actualizing them mean well what that means for example your scanner can uh, right now my scanner can scan up to 2017 if you don't update it you're only gonna stop right there you cannot scan any newer vehicle Oh, and you have to pay for those programs. Gotcha. Yeah, but that's. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Um, so, but that's if you want to be able to scan newer cars. But if you think about it, almost every new car you don't have to scan, you know, because most of them have a warranty. <clears throat> and also, the good thing about today's industry, we're not doing a lot of major repairs. A lot of it is just main maintenance, and that's what they'll tell you in classes. So, you know, we're just doing maintenance. Big, huge shops, they're scared of big repairs going internal, going into the engine going into your transmission. Huge shops, you know, they almost like Les Schwab or, you know, big companies like that. They focus on maintenance, repairs, it's no small stuff. And, and why would they be scared of big um, maintenance, it, uh, not maintenance, but repairs? Well, it's not so much scared. Um, it's just too much time consuming and it becomes too expensive. Most people don't even want to do that. They'll rather just trade in the vehicle. And, You're saying the car's worth is probably yeah, less than... Unless you have like an older car and you want to keep it alive, which is, you know, affordable and you know but you know it, it's 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 cool how everything works you know a lot of the things have a warranty and some shops get paid for warranty work most of the time the dealership takes care of it what are some things you learned about cars only once you've started working with people meaning that a classroom can't teach you oh i mean um it it, it gets really frustrating you know sometimes when you can't pull apart and you know it's in a really tight spot that i think that's the most frustrating part or sometimes you do a huge job and you forget to plug in something very small right underneath the whole job and you have to undo it all and you have to undo it all wow you wow, have wow, to wow undo it all is being a mechanic uh, a, a career or a job that with every single repair or job you perform on a car you become better and you learn more of course, of course, there is a lot of repairs that I've been learning lately that that I'm like, wow, that 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 makes more sense um, to a repair that we did three years ago where we couldn't figure it out. And here we are now, we're, you know, we're doing this repair. And for example, um, there was this Mercedes that we were working on just last week and, you know, we were doing all of our tests, uh, you know, it sounded like a transmission problem because it's shifting very rough, very weird. You know, in a, in a vehicle 2000 and older, you know, if it's shifting weird and it's not engaging properly, oh, it's the transmission because you don't have a lot of modules, like I said, or computers. So, you know, we checked it. The, the scanner's telling us that it's got a communication problem. That means that the transmission is not connecting with the computer or the module. So, you know, we, we went on and changed the, the transmission thinking that it was 
and it's still doing the exact same thing. So we're like, wow, this is not something mechanical. This is something technical or hmm. something electric. So down the road, we changed the module and then it solved the problem. So we're like, wow. So there, there, there's this whole time, there's a lot of cars that, that were like that. And you know, we, you just don't do the, the research enough where you sit there and read the procedures. So every car, no matter how long you've been in the industry, could be different. Every car is different. Every car is different. Yes. And and not a, not only every make and model are different, but every single one is different than the other. Yes. Wow. And then there's also a uh, bulletin boards uh, that the dealership releases to shops. That you there are steps that you go through that of, of of diagnosing procedures. So you get the information to make it easier for repairs. Yeah. Um. Is is becoming a mechanic and growing and being you know being successful as a mechanic. Does that involve knowing the right people, being in the right place at the right time, or does it surely consist of hard work and determination? Um, I think it's got both. Um, you know, if you want to work <clears throat> in a huge company, of course you go to school and then you get recruited or you, you get referred and then, you know, you go work at a, at a company. But for me personally, I mean, I feel like I was really lucky because I became business partners with my best friend. Oh. Which is which is Lucas Wallach. Um, we met when I was doing uh, a tow one day, and I dropped off a car at his house, and he he just started talking to me, and you know, next thing you know, we're hanging out every week. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and we were always going on adventures, and we would talk about how one day we would open up a shop. Uh, we just didn't know when. We didn't really have a huge plan, or or uh, or we, we we just didn't really plan it so much. So, so at this point, uh, how old are you? At this point, I was uh, about 25. So you're 25, you drop a car off at this guy's house. No, no, no. Uh, when I first met him, I was about 24 years old. 24, you get talking and you think, I, I want to open up a shop. Now, I'd love for you to tell me the story, but did you want to, op- why'd you want to open up a shop? Because it was a dream and you said, I'll, I'll make it happen or because you, for those who want to become mechanics, do you make more money as a shop owner? How does that work? Why did you specifically want to do that? Well, um, at first I was really scared. I was, I was, I was, I was really, really scared because it's, it's, it's a lot of responsibility and you're dealing with every person's car and each one of them is, you know, it's either they have different values of uh, in, in financially. And I'm just like, Oh my God, it's, that's a lot of responsibility. What if something goes wrong or, and you know you're always just just really scared until um, one day my brother called me and he said, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna buy another business. Um, you know, I want you to take care of the family business." So I was like, "Okay." Well, um, I was there the next day in the morning. You know, just swept the the office floor and you know just started working, not thinking about like, "Oh, this is gonna be mine one day," or or I'm taking over the shop. And I was like, "Wow, this is this is not bad at all. This is this is cool." So I, I think like life kind of pushed me towards that direction, and to and to expanding and being able to see how things work. And then I got to resolve a lot of the problems. I saw what the shop needed, so I you know I I changed the light bulbs that were out, and I was like, "Okay, you know." And people started coming in more and more, you know, growing wow. the family business. So I was like, "Wow, there is there is money to be made here, and then it's not as bad as I thought." And that became really satisfying for me. But at first, I was I was super scared, and I feel like if I had not, never gotten that opportunity, I, I probably would have still been in doubt of opening up a shop. So, it was your ability to come in as just a side guy, yes, and kind of do things because you wanted to, not because you had to, right? That enabled you to kind of get that initial feel for oh, this is not too bad. It's not what I thought it would be. Correct. So. Take it from there. So what happened? So you realize that a car auto repair shop isn't as scary as you thought. What's next? At first, I also felt bad. Um, I, I, I felt bad for leaving Lucas behind because that was kind of our, our 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 plan, you know, to open up a shop together. So I felt like I was abandoning him. So um, I was still hanging out with him after work. Um, what's funny is my my dad's auto repair shop is like two blocks away from Lucas's house. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I would still hang out with him a lot. And um, my brother came back, you know, the other business didn't go well. He didn't, you know, they they kind of flaked out on him. So I told him, okay, um, I'm like, all right, man, well, I, I gotta go because, you know, we, 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 we um, I just gotta do my own thing. You know, the business is good. 
you, you know you got to continue on from here and so you know we, we left it as that and that's when me and Lucas you know we got some money together um, at that time you know it's like everything was just falling into place I got some settlement money back that you know I wasn't expecting and I invested all my money into that shop Wow and that's how we started it you know it's just everything's kind of just been falling into place through life what was it like to invest all your money into something that you weren't sure would pay off? Um, at first, it wasn't too scary. And I've always had that idea that, you know, sometimes, if you, for example, if you buy tools, it's something that you won't devaluate because you're, you're, you're almost like saving it. You can, you can cash it out anytime you want or if, if you had to. But, you know, buying tools for a career is always a great investment. Gotcha. So you, you viewed it that way. So you open a shop with them. And what are the first, what's, what's the, uh, I've never opened up a shop. So what's it like to open up a, a shop and how do you get it off the ground? At first it's really exciting. It's super exciting at first because you have this huge building. It's like a, for example, if you're an artist, you have this big old drawing board where you could just start doing stuff to wow. it. Wow. And I, I feel one important thing about opening up a shop, you have to give it character. You have to give it style, you know, you have to. You can't just have a blank shop just of tools only, you know, hang up. I, I, I personally hang, hanged up a bunch of posters to just make it look cool. And, you know, the office, we we put a bunch of like some nice plants, you know, hang up a nice TV. So I just wanted it to be as much professional as possible. You know, just making it, making it home because that's where you live. Like if you think about it, you're there more time than you're at home. So wow. it has to be, it has to be cozy, it has to be comfortable. And it's your workplace. So it sounds like just just from sitting and talking to you that there's a lot more yes. to fixing cars when it comes to um, just being a mechanic, whether it's dealing with people or presenting. Your, you mentioned the word presentation, uh, or even especially owning a shop. There's so much more that goes beyond fixing cars. There's character that you said. There's making it your own, uh, making it comfortable for people to come in because ultimately there's a lot more that will go on there beyond fixing people's cars. Right. So that's something that I would not think about if I were, weren't sitting and talking with you. So how do you go about getting your first customers? When it comes to, if a mechanic wants to open up a shop, how do you approach that? Who do you talk to? Um, at first, you know, I, Facebook is super popular nowadays. You know, I made a lot of Facebook posts. Um, I, I was always talking about about the shop on Facebook. Um, I made a free Yelp ad. You know, I did a lot of the free stuff, Craigslist, um, OfferUp, you know, all those little things that I started doing. I was also advertising the local newspapers, the, the Spanish ones, you know, to attract, you know, just a different clientele. Absolutely. Look, is, uh, he's, he's Polish, so, you know, a lot of the, they have a Polish community. They, they start talking to each other about this new shop that has opened and you know next thing you know a lot of polish people start showing up <laughs> i love it yeah so it's you know it's it's a lot of of, of it's I, I see it as a family-owned business because you know we are a family right and I, I i also tell my teammates that you know we're we're a family we're friends we're there to help each other you know we're not there just to make money talk about getting customers in the door versus keeping them there well getting them in the door um the first time you meet them, that's when you have to give them your most and even extra good customer service. It's, uh, you know, the first impression you have to just do everything possible. Sometimes I would even give them a ride home if I had to, you know, that way they don't have to wait around for so long. Wow. Instead of calling them an Uber. Huh. You know, later down the road, you know, if they see that we're a little bit busier and we're not able to do that, you know, you, you tell me, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I, I'm busy, you know, I, I'm not able to give you a ride this time. Um, sometimes I would even let them borrow one of my own cars, you know, just to give them still that extra good customer service. Wow. So it, it, be, it sounds like it begins with you trusting them. Yes. Not waiting for someone to trust you. Right. I mean, within reason. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Caesar, what are some job misconceptions to being a mechanic that some people might have? What are some things that people think it is when it isn't? I mean, um, I, I think that people think that it's hard. Um, to do a lot of repairs, you know, like I go to, like, like, like I was saying earlier, today's industry is mainly about maintenance. Not every shop changes engines. You know, we do a lot of engine swaps because a lot of people tell other customers that, you know, we do good service. 
you know, it, it's real simple. You know, if like I say, if you want to just do light repairs, that's cool. You know, you you, you know, you, you won't always have so much of a headache. But if you want to be deeper into it, then of course you're gonna you're always gonna push yourself more. But the more you push yourself, the more headaches you're gonna have. Hmm. As far as repairs, is there anything else you learned about being a mechanic that you didn't know prior to becoming one? I mean, um, I feel like I I I focused my whole life on it. So I don't think there's something else that so I- So you've pretty I, much been around it. Yes, I don't think there's something else that I would wanna be that, that, that I'm not today. Interesting. That, well, that makes sense because uh, I guess if you're born into it, there won't be many things that shock you. Also, um, also the other big huge satisfactory that I had in my, in my heart is that um, it was my dad's dream for me to work at the family auto repair. But I told him one day that I had to, I had to fly on my own. And you know, when I would bring him to the shop, you know, he told me he was always, he was always proud of me. And you know, and, and I was always happy to know that. So let's, um, we briefly talked about this pr before the interview, but I want to ask you again on camera, is being a mechanic for everyone and why? Um, I don't think that it is for everyone. I think you have to have the patience for it because it takes a lot of patience to be a mechanic. You have to be very careful and be very fragile with people's cars. Um, you, know, you just have to take care of their car. You know, it comes in clean. The car has to leave clean. It, it's it's not for everyone. Some people won't, won't, won't have that. They'll be frustrated with something or something doesn't want to come off. It'll, they'll, it'll be frustrating for them. But I do see a lot of people, you know, coming into the uh, auto repair industry. So I believe it just takes patience if you if you want it to be for you. And there is money to be made. There's a lot of money to be made. But I, I don't think it's for everyone. I think some people are better. Um, you know, they're they're just good at, at, at an office job, or or even if you're working at an auto repair shop, you know, it, it, it could it could also be your field. You know, if you're if you're good at that, being in a computer, you know, doing a diagnose for a customer, doing a receipt print out. So, you know, there's different small fields in the automotive repair business. Got it. So, so would you say it has to be in someone's blood to be successful or could it just be a job for someone? I feel like it's a, just a job for some people just to, just to get by. I've, I've spoken with other mechanics and they say they just want to get by. They just want to pay their bills and they don't want to go work in construction or go wash dishes. Got it. That's what they know how to do, so they do it. Do what you know. Some people, they love to do it. They love to repair stuff properly. They love to, to just, they won't leave something alone huh. unrepaired. That's a mechanic I want. And they get bothered by it. Huh. <laughs> wow. What would you say are some necessary skills to have as a mechanic? Things you really need to have to be good. Uh, you have to be very comprehensive about how stuff works. Um, you know, you have to know the functions of each part of the car. Uh, and, and just mainly be crafty with your hands. Be very crafty with your hands. There has been times when Lucas tells me, Hey, I need you to get this bolt out with your little hands. Because <laughs> he's got big hands. <laughs> so you also <laughs> need to know who has what hands in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. So... Would you be willing to share with anyone out there who's looking to become a mechanic or maybe own a shop, what's a typical day in the life for Caesar? You show up at the shop, what does a day look like? What could someone expect, either being a mechanic, working in a shop, or owning a shop? What does that look like? Uh, I mean, to me, I, I see it pretty, every day is a new opportunity. Um, I love going to the shop, you know, showing up, I buy my guys coffee every morning. You know, you show up, you bring the coffees, you know, we, we chat with the guys for a little bit, you know, just talk about last night, what happened last night. We gossip a little bit, you know, we laugh a little bit. And then, you know, everybody finds their assignment of, <clears throat> well, Lucas gives out an assignment for everybody or pushes people to, you know, keep up with a car. Um, and every day you're, 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 you're hustling, you know, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're trying to make a sale, trying Absolutely. to get a car done, just trying to get things done. You know, and you know, people people come in the in the shop. You know, that's you're like, all right, cool. We have a customer. You know, we, let's let's go take care of them. 
Wow. I like that you started it out by every day is an opportunity. Right. Um, and that could mean something different to, to different people, but I love that you see it that way because, and also those opportunities might be different. One day it might be an opportunity to make someone's day, another, another day it might be an opportunity to, you know, uh, keep someone's car in shape for life. Right. So that opportunity might change, but I like, I like that you see it that way. You did mention when we were talking briefly before about getting started with customers when you opened the shop, you used Craigslist and Yelp and all these things that were available to you. How do you maintain your uh, presence? How do you keep getting noticed these days once you're already up and running and you, and you got the shop, shop established? How would, you, how would one go approach uh, not only getting noticed but maintaining that? Um, you know, there's new, pe new people moving into town. How would one expect as a shop owner, for instance, to go about that if they were to? I believe people are super focused on reviews nowadays. So anywhere you advertise, for example, like Yelp is one of my, my strong keys for advertising. A lot of people, uh, they leave a lot of good reviews in there. And, you know, people re review us before they even call us. Wow. And they tell us about those reviews. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're the guy with all the good reviews when I show up. They're like, we like your reviews, so we decided to call you. Facebook too, you know, we have a lot of reviews in there. So, you know, as soon as they, I've had customers that found me on Facebook. I don't know how that I'm not friends with. Right, right. So, so they, so there is a search key. Um, you can also pay for advertisement, which is, which is the easiest part. Right. Um, but it, you know, it can be expensive, but once you're settled, it's affordable. It's affordable mm -hmm. and it pays for itself. It pays for itself. Yeah. Uh, Yelp is super good. Um, Facebook. Google is tricky because you have to know who you're dealing with. Got it. Um, I've, I've, I've gotten scammed a, a few times. Wow. But, you know, you learn as you go. But I, I believe the internet is one of the strongest keys nowadays. Absolutely. Every, anybody who has to hear you will hear you on the internet. Absolutely. Caesar, how important is reputation in your industry? It's the, it's the number one. It's the number one rule. You have to keep your name clear. You have to keep your name clean. Um, you know, if something goes wrong with someone, you know, you have to make sure that you take care of them and your name is not dirty because, you know, your name is dirty a little bit. You know, it's like cancer. It starts spreading. Wow. So you got to make sure that you uh, keep you gotta, that going. Got to make sure you keep that going. Um, you know, every customer, that, that one customer that gave you the good review, always remember him because that's, you know, that it, it, he took a a few minutes of his day to to say a good word about you that everybody's gonna read so huh. you always gotta be thankful for your customers wow well it's just talking to you it sounds like there's a lot of customer service that's involved with this of course so uh, I wouldn't be wrong to think that you believe that if someone's think, thinking of becoming a mechanic they should really focus on their people skills because of ultimately course. that's you know the driving force and then the drive that that's that's what will determine the amount of cars they ultimately fix yeah because it's like a tree you know it just grows from a seed and then you know they 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 recommend you um and a lot of people are really scared of mechanics why because uh there's a lot of dishonesty in the automotive industry there's a lot of it i like people are just out to make money yes people are just out to make money people are just out there to make a sale um, you know, because people know that your car is supposed to be maintained within a certain amount of mileage, they want to charge you for everything. They, they recommend everything. And then if you go for it, then they're going to just make that sell. Wow. Wow. So when it comes to, um, uh, high, uh, as a shop owner, when it comes to hiring mechanics, what would you tell a shop owner to look for if they're looking to, uh, I would say first have a conversation with them, um, you know, a technical conversation about how uh, their experience on making that repair or, or what they know how to work on and just see, excuse me, see what they know, see what they, they can tell you, um, see where they studied at, see how long they've been working on cars for. Um, and, you know, then you'll be able to tell what kind of a person they are just based on how they talk to you. And obviously, once you, they, you, you do let them in the door, you see how they fix people's cars. Yes. And you get a really good idea. And then you're like, oh, okay, this is a clean person that knows how to work on cars. I haven't really had any bad experiences on with hiring people. Huh. Yeah, usually, you know, they, they know what they're doing. And, and Luke is always, like I said, he always double checks their work. So that's also a huge blessing on my end for having somebody so responsible like that. That's awesome. Um, 
I, I do want to end with talking maybe a little bit from the customer's perspective, what they could do to get keep the car in good shape. But before I get there, I, I do want to make sure I ask you, talk about hybrid versus non-hybrid cars from a mechanic's perspective. Um, with hybrid cars, you know, we've been working on them a little bit. You know, we, well, we all know that they're more fuel efficient. We kind of try to stay away from them because... Um, you know they have they're they're more electric they're more advanced you know everything's electric almost just the engine and the transmission are mechanical wow but you know they they just they they're having a lot of little problems and you know we kind of try to stay away from them you know because we 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 got this saying at the shop don't be a hero <laughs> <laughs> interesting you learned how yeah you're a mechanic right that's that's awesome so what would you what are some easy things customers or just people who aren't mechanical, mechanically inclined? What are some easy things people could do to just make keep their car going that you see people coming into the shop that if they were to do that, they wouldn't be in the shop? Uh, I mean, um, check engine lights is the number one key. Sometimes c customers have a check engine light on and they won't do nothing about it. They'll wait till the car's doing a, a weird noise or checking your fluids is extremely important changing your oils with the right amount of mileage um, you know your tire pressure is also important check your tires sometimes people have tires and they're they're very low on life and you know they they just don't realize that stuff but you know oil changes transmission <clears throat> services which are the the cheapest things to do that will extend your life double than not changing your oil constantly so engine uh, uh, engine lights are the number one thing you see. Of course. And people neglect it because... Well, uh, also, there is a light that comes on and says, check your gauges. You know, it'll, it'll come on. And of course, when it's, when that light comes on and it, it just, it just, people call me and they're like, hey, what, what does that mean? I'm like, what just, it says, check your gauges. <laughs> <laughs> they look at the needle and it's all the way up. And oh my God. All overheating. <laughs> Man, Caesar, is the auto repair industry still a good industry for someone to get into in 2018? Oh, of course, of course. It it's is. an industry that's never going to die because we're all, um, unless we're all flying cars, then it's going to be out of business. But right now there is a car and you go outside and you're going to see more cars than people. Wow. That's true. Because <laughs> people own two or three. Yes. Caesar, in, 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 in the name of wrapping things up, what are some things you would tell someone out there who's looking to become a mechanic? Uh, what are some things you wish someone told you um, when you were starting out? Well, that's already a good start if you want to be a mechanic. That's already a super good start. You're already there. You're already taking your first turn to the step. I would say don't stop. Just, just keep pushing yourself. You know, start hanging out with people. You know, even even go do some some free hours. A lot of people do it you know, before you, you go on on a big huge career. Go and do some free hours, get the feel of it. But if you feel like that that like you want to be a mechanic, just do it. Don't let nothing stop you. Of course, you're already, you're already at the right at the right path. It's worth it at the end. Yeah, that desire of wanting to become a mechanic. That's that's what it takes. Cool. Last question: If you could change one thing about your industry, what would it be? That that's kind of a tough question. That's why I ask it. Um, what would I change? The I would 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 do. You, do you mean that as far as uh, customers go, or as far as if you could change one thing, what would you change? Um, I don't. I don't. I ask this question to everyone. <laughs> I don't think I I have a solid answer for that. Um, I would change. Uh, I would change. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> you can't think of one thing you change. Uh, I would change um, the the cost on parts. Okay. Some parts are overpriced. I feel like okay. The rather than other parts, you know, like American cars, you know, sometimes they have cheaper parts. European cars, they have some parts that are just overmarked, and I, I think that would change that. You would change for that. customers. Gotcha. Cool. See, did you have fun, Caesar? Yes. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you so awesome. much for having me. Yeah. Hey guys, y'all here. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful, really. I hope my guest today was able to shed light and provide you with clarity uh, about what it is they do. Whether it's you who are looking to gain more information or maybe a friend or a family member of yours uh, is looking to and you're going to share this video with them. I really hope it was helpful because really that's why I made this thing happen. To literally 
take my guest's perspective, opinion, experience, and share that with people out there who I don't even know. But I know how helpful this sort of platform would have been back for me when I was making decisions. Also, if you liked the video, consider liking it. And if you found it helpful, consider subscribing to it. And here's why. It's YouTube's way of growing a platform by the number of subscriptions, uh, views, likes, and all those, those things alike. Um, and I do want to grow this platform. I want to reach an endless number of people who are seeking to get uh, questions answered um, and just a better idea on what it is they're researching and Google articles just, you know, they're not cutting it uh, as good as they wish they were. Um, and so if you'd consider doing those things uh, so I'll be able to grow the platform, I'd really appreciate that. Finally, I'm in the Seattle area. That's where I'm based. That's where my uh, video studio is located at. If you live in the Seattle area and you do for a work, for a job or a career, you wake up and do something every day that you think other people out there would be curious or interested in learning more about, I'd love to sit and talk with you. I'd love to have you on as one of my guests. Contact me. There's an email in the about description. There should be an email below there. Please reach out to me and we'll make something happen. Again, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope my guest was able to put you a little bit more at ease than you were when you started the video. Um, and again, that's why I created this space to do just that. If you know of anyone out there who might be, uh, who might benefit from what my guest said today, please consider sharing the video as well. Episodes are coming out once a week. I appreciate you guys' support and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. -bye.